Bringing in Al Jazeera's senior political analyst, Mahmoud Bashar, uh, who's with us here in uh, Doha. So we had Daniel Levy, the president of the U.S. Middle East Project. He's also a former Israeli negotiator. He was saying that this ruling is a landmark legal case. It, 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 it is a, uh, marks a specific moment in the way that Israel is regarded in legal terms uh, by the rest of the world. In practical terms, what does this ruling actually achieve if it's not enforceable, although it is binding? Um, you know, the court, the ICJ, is the world court. It's not the world government. No matter what the ruling is, it wasn't going to enforce it. Even if the ruling is binding, this court, the 15 judges, don't have a police force, don't have an army, don't have military. They don't have money. They don't have anything with which to enforce any decision, right? It is the United Nations members, notably security members, national, United Nations Security Council members, that can enforce any such. So it doesn't matter what this court comes out with. In the end of the day, they will not re enforce it, right? I mean, that's very simple. In fact, this court in 2004 also made an opinion about the apartheid wall in the West Bank, and it judged it to be illegal and should be dismantled 20 years ago. The wall is still there. It has not been dismantled because Israel and the United States would not dismantle it, right? So the court did issue an opinion on the wall 20 years ago, and the wall is still standing. And Israel is still an occupying power in the West Bank, right, as it is in Gaza. So I think what's important in this ruling is that it is a huge success a victory for South Africa, even though it does not have immediate wins for the people in Gaza. In terms of the moving on, you mentioned the UN Security Council there. Is there a, a, an argument that suggests that, given the circumstances you talked about, does this give some more weight to cases or, or um, applications that are made to the UN Security Council? that might actually sway the decisions of those, that might actually, as Patty was just explaining, put the U.S. in a very difficult position, almost right into a corner, when it comes to actually using its veto in favor of Israel, as it has done in the past. I think in many ways, uh, Rob, the idea today that these 15 judges from 15 different countries, the world's highest court, have decided based on evidence and based on United Nations agencies, that they will put Israel on trial for genocide moving forward. That moral weight of this court, of that judgment, based on evidence of the past 100 plus days, will have huge effect on the psychology and the moral standing of those countries who have been supporting Israel unconditionally the past three, four months. How they react, you know, based on that, that depends on how expedient they are, how narrow-minded they are, or how much they feel themselves to be men and women of history, right? That they are on the right side of history. Because here, as you said, and as Patty st stated, that some of the ruling, some of it, right, in effect, does echo some of what the United, some of the United States has been warning about. You need to stop the indiscriminate bombing. You need to, you need to uh, lessen the civilian casualties, and so on and so forth. But that's not where the importance of this court's ruling is. The importance of this, uh, this court ruling lies in the fact that they suspect there's a plausible evidence that Israel is carrying genocide against a people. So it's not just about war crimes, and it's not just about avoiding civilian casualties. They think there's a plausible proof, plausible evidence, plausible evidence, mm -hmm. that Israel is carrying genocide against the Palestinian people in Gaza. So that must then provoke or invoke a certain move on the part of those who support Israel and those who do not support Israel, because Pressure is going to start building up by the Western public opinion on Western states at the United Nations Security Council to call for a ceasefire. And I think different countries from the global south are also going to start putting pressure on their northern partners, right, to start putting more pressure on Israel. Because 
the, 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 the ICJ is not just making rulings in the abstract. I mean, as I said, it's a moral legal blow. But in effect, they're, they're telling Israel, we want to hear back from you in a month's time. It's like Israel is on probation already. Mm. It's like Israel is on parole already. That you need to come back and tell us and show us how you are respecting the things we are telling you. So Israel is a suspect. Israel is on trial. And not just on trial for this and that insignificant thing. It's on trial for genocide. Mm. Marwan, thank you very much indeed. We're going to be talking to you again in about half an hour's time. But for now, thank you very much indeed. Marwan Bashara.